Oh, this world's getting crazy. You just get ready. We're going to talk about that. We're going to get to some news headlines, some comments of the day, and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River Channel. And as I do every single day, I'll remind you, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. And I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord. And I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable. Grab yourself something to eat or drink. Maybe you want some coffee or tea. Ooh, have some Sprite and some New York cheesecake. Or grab whatever it is that you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. I want to talk about something before I get into news headlines that I never do. I want to talk about numbers on this channel for a moment, okay? There's a couple reasons. Because the numbers on this channel aren't me. They're you. You guys are the numbers on this channel, right? And this channel isn't just a channel of me talking to you guys. I think we all know that. This channel has become, we call it the Watch and River family. And it's enormous. It's ginormous. And today at some point, maybe by the time you're watching this, I will have hit 75,000 subscribers. And I just want to thank you. You know, I, I want to thank you, but I feel like I'm thanking family members for being part of the family. And it's just, it's you guys. It's you guys. And the love that is shown in the comments section of these videos is incredible. But I want to do a little further, a little further review of the statistics of this channel. All right. And I want to tell you, I'll tell you after why I'm, why I'm doing this. Okay. In the last 28 days, there has been 1.5 million views on this channel in 28 days. There has been this, this just is mind blowing. 19 million minutes watched in the last 28 days. 19 million minutes watched. Now, these numbers don't count Facebook because a lot of people share my stuff on Facebook. A lot of people upload my stuff on Facebook. I've never uploaded one of my videos on Facebook, but, and it doesn't count TikTok, which I'm all over that. I've never been, I've never even had a TikTok account and also um, Instagram. And I don't upload stuff to Instagram. So that's that one point, that 19 million minutes doesn't even count those platforms. But my, my whole point of this is these numbers don't give me an ego. These numbers hold me very accountable to speaking truth. I, I can't even tell. There, there's a few people that I really, really trust. Brothers in Christ. Who I have literally said to them, you hold me accountable. If you ever hear one thing that comes out of my mouth that is in any way twist anything or it feels like I'm going off the rails a little bit, you call me. You get in touch. One of them is my biological brother, Ted, who lived with us for a couple of years and he no longer lives with us. He bought a house and he's the only family member that's watched every single one of my videos. And I have said to him, Ted, if I ever ever go off the rails at all. You call me and you tell me. And he goes, are you kidding? Of course I will. And so I tell you these numbers because these numbers really hold me accountable. And, and I, it makes me realize like I have a huge responsibility now to preach Christ and Christ's blood, that atoning blood, that beautiful atoning precious blood and, and, and that salvation that we only have through Christ. And, and I just gotta, I just gotta keep going forward and building this community. And I just want to thank you guys so much for the love and the support and the love you have for each other. And I want to thank Robin for all the comments he moderates and all the negativity he gets rid of. Some people call it censorship. I'm fine with that. Uh, I want a community that's eagerly awaiting the rapture of the church. Uh, I, I don't want a debate stage. There's plenty of places people can do that. And I want to thank my other moderator. Um, I don't, I, she doesn't really want me to use her name because she's very humble in that way. So I'm not going to use her name, but um, you guys would know her if you saw her. And I just, we just got to keep focused on Christ, all of us, because the rapture of the church is coming at us super, super soon. I want to get to one more quick thing. I used to think the Great Commission, when I would hear the Great Commission, and I'm going to read part of Matthew 
uh, 28, chapter 28, verse 18 and 19. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Um, I used to think when I would read that, like when I heard about the Great Commission and I heard Jesus saying, you know, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I thought, all right, well, you got to be like a huge missionary. So like, you know, I can't do that. I, I can't do that until I learned that the word go is a participle and it means as you are going. What Jesus was saying was, as you are going, make disciples of all nations. So meaning like as you're going to your doctor's appointment, as you are going into the grocery store, as you are going to your neighbor's house, you know, it, that's the great commission. It's just each one of us has a job to proclaim that Christ is risen and Christ is coming back and that Christ died for your sins. And sometimes it's as simple as a God bless you. I hope you have a great day to someone you meet. I used to think it was so enormously big. How could I ever do it? Because it's so big. Okay. And, and I just want to back up and just say one more thing. When I started this channel, I've told this many times. I said to my wife that first day, I just made a Christian video that I'm going to upload on YouTube. Didn't tell her I was going to do it. Didn't really know I was going to do it for sure. And she said, okay, what's, what's your plan? Like, what do you, what are you thinking of doing? And I said, I don't really know. I, I just know one thing. I'm going to upload Christian videos. I'm going to talk about Jesus and the fact that he's coming soon, because that's what's been put on my heart. And I'm going to proclaim the good news. And if in one year I have a hundred subscribers on YouTube and 50 people watch the videos, I will be thrilled because I had finally gotten to a point in my life where I realized that if I didn't start serving Christ at some level, I was never going to do it. And I felt drawn to this river and it was like, it's time. So I, I don't care. I don't care if nobody watches. I am going to do this. And God had a different plan. That was 16 months ago. And he used this weird vessel to reach a lot of people. All praise, uh, all praise be to Jesus. But I'm just trying to show you that it doesn't, the Great Commission isn't about how big it is or how small. It's just, you, you just as you're going, you just proclaim the good news. And I think we can all do that. I think we can all do that. I see you guys doing it to each other in the comments every single day, praying for each other, lifting one another up, praising each other. You guys are just great servants. I just, I love you guys and I appreciate everything, everything. Okay. All right. Here, let's get some news. You probably heard about this, but a lot of people only use me as a news source. So I gather stuff. So just in case you haven't, but Pergosian, that guy, the leader of the Wagner group who tried to do that coup against Russia two months ago, he's dead. His plane crashed yesterday. And, um, and I, what is this going to mean for, for this world? I mean, I don't know exactly what's going to happen here, but the name of this title is the name. The title of this video is just get ready because the next month is going to be crazy in this world. I really believe that. I think Israel's on the brink of war. I think this, this thing's pretty big, but yeah, they, he died yesterday. They weren't sure at first if he was in it, in the plane. Now I guess they've confirmed he was in it, but you know what? I, I don't. I have a hard time believing anything right now because we're in the land of lies and deception. You know, I, I don't really, I've never been able to figure out this Wagner group thing fully, but it's interesting. He, he was one of the passengers. I'm not, I think, I'll, I think seven died. And what else? Uh, Dimitri Otkin was the founder. He was a commander and founder of the Wagner force. He was on the plane. He was on it. He's gone. And Amir Sarfati pointed out something interesting. June 23rd is when Wagner's attempted coup began. August 23rd is when they were killed, the leaders. Two months to the day after that coup started. You know, the entire senior chain of command of the Wagner group is gone. Now, the surviving Wagner dudes are 
are, are they're planning something and they're saying they're planning an appropriate response. So that will be interesting. I don't know what's going to happen. I just know one thing. The world is getting hairier by the day right now. It is really, really going crazy. Uh, also, Amir shared this. He said, reports surfaced from the Wagner Group channels hinting at significant movements. The Kremlin is mentioned in cryptic messages. Heavy machinery aligns in formation. Wagner Group's entire contingent is said to be leaving Belarus imminently. Um, and he said the digital realm buzzes with anticipation. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. But whoa, crazy developments. Also, today is the last day of the BRICS meeting. And they announced today that six new members. So now I think there's a total of 11. Um, the new members are Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Those are the new members. And, and here, here's the wild thing. NATO has vowed to punish those who join. I don't think NATO realizes their whole point of, of having this community together is to get rid of the dollar and is to get rid of NATO. You know, NATO doesn't realize NATO's powerful, but their power and influence is waning as we watch these, these nations growing in power and influence. Six of the world's nine largest oil producers are now going to be in BRICS as of January 1st, when those countries are sworn in. Six of the world's nine largest oil producers will now be in BRICS. That's some serious power. Energy is power. We know that. Uh, Russia's president, on the final day of BRICS, he called on BRICS to abandon the U.S. dollar and settle trade in local currency. So that's, you know, this is like we're watching, and I keep saying this, we're watching the framing of the total beast system for the Antichrist to come in. You know, we're watching CBDCs develop and be tested out and be used by some countries, central bank digital currencies. That's going to be a one world monetary cashless system. We're watching this BRICS, BRICS which is kind of a, a, a gathering of nations that are talking about introducing their own currency. Right now, they're saying, use any currency but the dollar. They're trying to destroy the dollar big time. And they will. They will. What else? We also have, let's go to Israel from Israel Radar. Israel security test confronting rising terror wave. Israel is currently navigating a complex security landscape with heightened is, uh, concerns about a surge in Palestinian terrorism. Israel is currently navigating a complex security landscape with heightened concerns about a surge in Palestinian terrorism. The deadly terror wave already has claimed 35 lives in 2023 compared to 31 in 2022. The security forces are strategizing operations across the West Bank to neutralize current and emerging threats. IDF radio reports that the security cabinet authorized the army to intensify targeted killings of terrorists with a focus on the leaders and the organizers of the terror attacks. Um, next, we have Hamas begins to establish a rocket production infrastructure in Janine. Uh, a huge military operation is coming to the West Bank in the coming hours and days, it appears. The Israeli Defense Forces and the Israel Security Agency are preparing a series of operations in the Janine area to dismantle the terrorist infrastructure known as the Alash uh, Battalion. This group is responsible for manufacturing and launching rockets aimed at Israel. And there is no shortage. There is a quarter of a million rockets aimed at Israel as I speak right now. What are they going to do? Is Israel going to do a preemptive strike? And where do you begin? Where do you begin when your entire country is surrounded with rockets and Iran is talking about the day they get a nuke, which who knows, they can have it right now, you know, aiming it at Israel and firing it to wipe them off the map. Where do you begin? God has his hand on that nation, and we all know that. But it is it is a crazy time in the world. Next, from the Times of Israel, we have Palestinian, uh, Palestinian terror 
chiefs, terror chiefs in Gaza are said taking precautions for fear of an Israeli attack. Those leaders are afraid because uh, Netanyahu basically authorized them to go after the leaders. The leaders of the Palestinian terror groups in the Hamas-ruled Gaza Strip are taking heightened precautions over concerns that they could be targeted by Israel following several recent deadly West Bank attacks, according to Arabic language media reports yesterday on Wednesday. Sources in the resistance told the Al Arabi Al Jadid News that Palestinian figures in Lebanon have also adopted enhanced security measures. In comments to the pro Hezbollah Al Akbar Daily, a source warned of a major escalation in violence if Israel carries out any targeted killings. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen because, uh, there's just a lot of talk about war in Israel. And there's so many variables. You know, they're looking at the United States. And right now we have an administration that's very, you know, we support Iran more than we support Israel in a way. And, uh, you know, they don't want that administration to change in the next election. So they're, they're kind of, this is all going to happen, I think, in the next few months. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it is. Next, we've got, from the beginning of Sorrows News, Egypt agrees to import 38.7 billion cubic meters of natural gas from Israel over the next 11 years. At the current gas prices, the massive deal would contribute approximately $150 billion to the Israeli economy. If you understand the Ezekiel 38 war, that's going to come at some point. Some people think it's getting ready now. I think the players are getting ready but I happen to think it happens sometime into the seven year tribulation after we're gone, you know, but the reason they go in is to grab the booty, grab the spoil, you know, because Israel becomes ultra rich and everything's set up for it. Like you read Bible prophecy and then you read the news. It's like, how did, how did they know? How did those writers of the Bible know? Because they were Holy spirit inspired writings. Incredible. This is sad. This is very sad. The more you look into the Maui fires, the more you just shake your head and go, Lord, come get us because this world is evil. FEMA officials are staying at a thousand dollar a night luxury hotels in Maui amid recovery efforts while the government is giving Hawaii residents whose lives just went up in flames a $700 one time payment. But the FEMA officials are whining and dining in $1,000 a night hotels. Does that surprise you? That doesn't surprise me. Nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing. I tell my wife when I go through this news, like, it's very rare that I go, whoa, like something shocks me. Because my expectations are very low for human behavior right now. You know, we are in the very last days. And I always tell you that I, I've never seen wickedness and evil and corruption and lawlessness like I'm seeing right now. Right? You guys agree? Never seen it like I see it now. There was a fire tornado in Canada, either the day before yesterday or yesterday. I don't know if you can see that picture. Fire tornado. Incredible. The weather's off the charts. So today is the day, okay, that Japan is supposed to release the nuclear water from their Fukushima nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean. And they have started doing it. But before they started doing it, North Korea says Japan must immediately call off the Fukushima water release. And then I saw about 10 minutes later, Japan has begun releasing wastewater from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant into the Pacific Ocean. How crazy is that? But don't you dare have a burger because you're killing the environment. <laughs> don't you farm. You guys stop farming. We're going to put farm regulations in where we're going to see everything you grow because you're killing the environment growing food on a farm. But we can release nuclear water into the Pacific Ocean because, come on, or we can burn down islands and we can, you know, burn down everything. We can burn chemical spills and derail trains and burn food processing plants. But don't you dare eat a burger. That's the world we live in as we are. Don't let this discourage you. 
if you know Jesus, because we're about to be raptured. This is an exciting time to be alive. If you don't know Jesus, yeah, go back into panic mode because it's bad. I got no good news for you if you don't know Jesus. I'll try to, I'll explain how to know Jesus in a few minutes, but you were born at the wrong time. If you just want to live and live to a ripe old age and die of natural causes and you don't know Jesus, you were born at the wrong time. You don't have much time on earth. I'm just going to tell you. All right, this is sad not surprising in the end days. And this won't surprise most of the people that watch these videos. A survey, prosperity gospel beliefs on the rise among churchgoers. According to a study from Lifeway Research, 52% of American Protestant churchgoers say their church teaches God will bless them if they give more money to their church and charities, with 24% strongly agreeing. This is up from 38% of churchgoers who agreed in a, in a 2017 Lifeway research study. Now I'm trying to figure this article out because it says, with, oh, 24% of the 52% strongly agree. Additionally, churchgoers are more likely today than in 2017 to believe God wants them to prosper financially. 76% believe that versus 69% back then. And that they do have they do have to do something for God in order to receive material blessings from Him. Forty five percent of people think that it is a total twist of Malachi that these pastors use. You know, God says only one time in Scripture, "Test me on this," and it's in giving. It's in giving. He says, "Test me on this, and see if I won't pour you out a blessing that you can't contain." Well. They take that and they, they twist it and they're like, give to get, give to get, give to get. Well, you know, it's a paradox. You guys know that. It's a paradox. If you're giving to get, God knows our hearts. He knows our, the depths of who we are. If in your mind you are giving and thinking, oh, I'm going to get back in return. So I'm, I'm going to get that car I've been dreaming about. Let me give more to the church because I'm going to get that car. God knows your heart. God said, test me on this. See if I won't pour you out a blessing that you can't contain when you're giving in the right spirit. When I give to ministries, I never, ever, 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 ever care what they do with it. Don't send me your annual report. I don't care what you do with it. I'm not really giving to you. I'm giving to God. And once that money leaves my hand, it's none of my business. What happens to it? I'm giving to God because God has given to me. Jesus gave his life for me. And I don't care who it is. I don't care if I'm giving to a, a YouTuber or if I'm giving to a pastor or if I'm giving to a charity. That I, I Trust me, I don't just give to any. I'm not going to give to... Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to say the name of the charity. I'm just not going to say it. Well, I will say this one. I'm not going to give to the Red Cross and say, well, I'm giving to God because I know darn well that the money's not going to be used in good ways. But so I kind of seek out a charity that I like and I give them money and then it's between them and God what they do with the money. It's no longer my responsibility once I give. It's not my responsibility of what they do with the money. That's between them and God. I'm giving it to God. So it is, it's a paradox. All right, next we got lawmakers want subpoena power in UFO inquiries. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are looking to expand their investigative power following their July hearing on unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs, or UFOs, which they say left more questions than answers. They are not done digging with the UFOs. You know why? Because we're about to get raptured, and they're going to blame the UFOs. They're going to blame them. All right, we have to get to comments of the day because, man, I'm running out of time, and i, and I got to share the gospel, too. All right. Uh, K Mac, I totally agree that I will catch myself having been occupied with something and not spoken with my beautiful Jesus, and I immediately speak words of praise and love to him. Isn't it stunning how his presence is so rich and real of late? Something is stirring. I'm so sure. I've been saved and filled with his Holy Spirit for 43 years. Something is stirring. Praise God. Amen, K Mac. Something is stirring. The rapture of the church is coming up very, very soon. All right. I'm going to skip that comment. I'm trying to, I got to get to the gospel, but I want to do a, at least one more comment. Um, which one? There was one that I really, really liked. 
well, this one I like, Tracy Weller. Well, if Iran's proxies fire missiles into Jerusalem, their aim is so bad that they would probably destroy the Temple Mount, including their own mosque. How about that being a good reason for a new temple being built? I think that's very possible. I think it's very possible when the war starts in Israel that, that the Al-Aqsa Mosque gets hit. I really do. And that would... I think the peace negotiations after that war would allow for the temple to be built. Well, I, and I think that's kind of how it may be, how that seven-year Daniel 927 agreement gets confirmed, is I think it may be, there may be a, a war in Israel, the mount gets blown up, but Israel wins the war because God's hand is on that nation and he's going to win it and they're all going to know it was God. And then in their peace negotiations... They say, okay, you got your red heifers, you go build your temple. We won't be here for that. We're out of here soon, just so you know. All right, let's do one more. Finn, Finn said, our worldly possessions are just one big yard sale that hasn't happened yet. Our golf clubs, fishing rods, cars, artwork, etc., will end up in the hands of strangers. The only possession that truly matters is the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is the only possession that matters. And first of all, Seven-year tribulation, nobody's going to care about golf clubs. Nobody's going to care about artwork. They're going to want food. They're going to want food and safety, and they're going to have a hard time finding both of those two. It's bad. You don't want to be here for the seven years. And that's why I beg you every single day to realize that, yes, Jesus is coming soon. And if you don't know what he did for you, and you don't put your faith and trust in his finished work and his atoning blood, you're, you're going to be left behind to face horrendous, horrendous times. And all you have to do is understand you're a sinner and know that every sin you've ever done, every sin you're doing now and that you'll do in the future, all of your sins are were placed on Jesus when he was on the cross. Every single sin was placed on Jesus. And Jesus came to earth knowing that he was going to die for sins. It was his mission to have our sins be able to be wiped away, to have us washed white as snow. That's what Jesus did. He came here to die for us. He came here to shed blood that when you have faith in that blood, you realize my sins just disappear in that blood. That blood does wash me white as snow. So you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness of my sins. And I'm going to turn from my way to your way or from my way to Yahweh. And I'm going to ask you, Jesus, wash me white as snow. I have faith that your blood was so powerful, it will get rid of all my sins. And I have faith that you left heaven to come here to pay for my sins. And I have faith that when you were nailed to the cross and you were bleeding that incredibly precious blood, I know your last words were, it is finished. Finally, it's finished. The debt has been paid in full. And I know you died and you were placed in a tomb, and miraculously, three days later, you rose again. You were alive again. You were seen over by over 500 people, and that's the reason we still know this. I really believe if 500 people hadn't seen Jesus, that we may not even know his name today. But it was his plan. So, and 500 people did see him, and we do know who he is. He's the savior of the world. So when you say, yes, Jesus, I have faith in that blood, and I have faith in your finished work, I believe that you lived perfectly and died and rose again, and you're coming back. And that's the gospel. And once you believe that, once you believe that, and you're like, Lord, forgive me of these sins, I'm turning. I'm no longer living this way. I'm turning. I believe in you. I have faith in your blood. I have faith in your finished work. You're saved, and God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll be born again. You'll have new life. Jesus said, I make all things new. And you'll be rapture ready. You'll be sealed unto the day of redemption. God will never let you out of the palm of his hand. You will be in the eternal family of God in paradise forever and ever. If you reject this message, it's the opposite. If you say, I don't need that, I don't want that, you'll end up in hell. And it never ends, I'm sorry to say, and it's not a party. Read what, the, read what the Bible says about hell. It's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, and it's very, very hot. 
but you need Jesus. You need him today. The world is on the brink of going insane right now. The world is on the brink of going insane. Do you know why? Because the rapture of the church is about to happen. And if you want to reject this message, you will regret it the moment the rapture happens. So turn to Jesus today. Today is a day of salvation. And that's what I got for you today. I'm going to shut the camera off now. And I'm going to pray for every person who watches this video. And if we're not raptured today, and my goodness, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will see you tomorrow. I love you guys.